Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So are you observing one thing? Right now we are only talking about the features which can be seen from outside because right now we are discussing only about the morphology and not anatomy. Right? So we are not going to talk about anything which is located inside. We are only going to talk about the external structure. Now the next one is clitellum and seti. So now let us see what is clitellum and seti. We will first talk about clitellum. It is a prominent dark band of glandular tissue which is called as clitellum. So where do we see this? If you look at the body of the earthworm, if you look at this area, this particular area is the clitellum. So it is a dark colored glandular tissue which is present in the body of earthworm. So this is called clitellum. Now it generally appears as a swelling covering several segments, 14th to 16th. So that is why you see the thickness of this segment is not segment, the thickness of this band is quite bigger when compared to other segments because it includes three segments, 14th to 16th. Now based on the presence of this clitellum, the body of the earthworm is divided into three regions. Pre-clitellar, so this entire region is known as pre-clitellar. This portion is known as clitellar and the beyond this is known as post-clitellar. So pre-clitellar, clitellar and post-clitellar. Right? And this is what I was talking about while I was telling you about the scientific classification that it falls under clitellata due to the presence of clitellum. So this is clitellum. And clitellum plays a very important role, in fact a major role during the process of reproduction. Seti, what are they? These are S-shaped structures in the epidermal pits in middle of each segment. Now, each segment, at the middle of each segment, if you look at, look at the below side of the earthworm, you will see that small S-shaped structures are present. So, they arise from the epidermis, that means almost from the skin they arise. They are small, small, thin hair-like S-shaped structures. So these are known as seti and they help in locomotion. They help the earthworm to move from one place to another. They are present in all the segments except first, last and clitellum. So except the first segment that is the peristomium, the last segment it is not there, first segment it is not there and clitellum it is not there. Other than that everywhere seti is present. It helps in locomotion. So how it helps in locomotion of this S-shaped structure, they act like hooks, small tiny hooks. So they help to anchor and control the worm while moving through the soil. So if it is like a hook-like structure, so whenever the earthworm crawls on the uh, soil, so it actually helps to anchor the soil, hold the soil and then control the worm. Now there are also bristles present, so bristles hold a section of the worm from firmly to the ground while other part of the body protrudes forward. So what happens is, let us suppose this portion of the body is stiff now, the front portion moves. Again after some time this portion moves and this portion is stiff, again this portion moves, this portion is stiff and that is how the movement actually happens in case of earthworm. So segments will contract and relax independently. It is not that all the segments will contract together and all the segments will relax together. In that case, the earthworm will not move at all. So each one segment will contract and relax independently so that the length of the body increases. Let us suppose if, if I say that only this portion is moving and this portion is static, that means there is no contraction expansion happening in this portion. But this portion if it expands, so the length will increase it. again when it contracts, length will decrease. So only that expansion contraction is happening in one portion. So as soon as it extends, now this portion will start extending. Again, this will also move. So that is how it moves basically. So segmentation provide flexibility as well as strength in the movement. So two things together help in the locomotion of earthworm, seti and segmentation. They 
synchronize with each other so that the earthworm can move. So this was all about the morphology of earthworm. So now we are going to talk about the anatomy of earthworm. So morphology was all about the external things which are visible. Now there is nothing much which is visible externally. Like if you talk about the organs, stomach, intestine, um, heart, etc. are not visible from outside. So all those things come under anatomy of earthworm. So now we are going to talk about the internal structure of earthworm. So what are we going to study in that? We are going to talk about the organ systems because once we cover all the organ systems, we will end up covering everything. So first we talk about the body form, then digestive system, circulatory system, respiratory system, nervous system, excretory system and reproductive system. So we are going to talk about all the life processes, all the organ systems, in the earthworm's body. So we will first start with the body form of earthworm. How is the body of the earthworm like? As I mentioned before also the body is segmented. Now what separates one segment from another? There is a partition or a wall between any two segments. So this partition is known as septum. Again, each segment has muscles and bristles called seti. I was talking about some S-shaped structures which are present. So they are basically muscular in nature because they are capable of contraction and elongation. So they are called seti. Talking about the body wall, body wall is covered by a thin layer of cuticle, so entire wall. So cuticle generally controls or regulate the flow of water. They, it is a waxy layer, so prevents water loss, prevent, protects the earthworm from dehydration. Now below the cuticle pre is present epidermis, which is present in human beings also on our skin. Now epidermis, so outermost layer is cuticle, below that is epidermis. And again in epidermis also there are three layers which are present. Now talking about the three layers, how will you get to see these three layers? Let us suppose if you observe a cross section of the earthworm. So if you cut the earthworm from somewhere, say from here, and then if you try to observe its cross section, it will look somewhat like this. So looking at the cross section, you can see that there are three layers in the epidermis. There is one layer called the circular muscle layer. So here you can see small white white circles. So they represent the circular muscle layer. Then you have cylindrical layers. You see the cylindrical shaped things are present. So this is called the longitudinal muscle layer and even beyond be, this inside this is present the coelomic epithelium this is the coelom right this white area coelom is nothing but the body cavity so here also a layer of epithelium is present which is called the coelomic epithelium so these are the three layers of epithelium which are present. So outermost is the circular and, and the outermost even outside that is present the cuticle. So outermost layer on the skin is cuticle. Below that is circular muscle layer. Inside that is longitudinal muscle layer and inside that is coelomic epithelium. Right. So when I am talking about the epithelium, what is the time? Now since we have spoken about animal tissues, we all know what is the purpose of epithelial tissue. So what is the what type of epithelium is present here? It is columnar epithelium with secretory gland cells. So secretion is an important property of the epithelium which is present here. Right. So what kind of epithelium is present? It is columnar epithelium. So this is about the body of Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.